So you decided to get a new gaming PC this year and you're choosing the parts for your next build, but what do you go with for a cooling solution? Should you go with air cooling or liquid cooling? What about using the cooler included with your CPU? Is there a cooler that's included with the CPU that you picked? I'll be answering all the questions you might have about keeping your CPU cool, whether you go with AMD or Intel, starting now. Intel and AMD have recently come out with new CPUs. For Team Blue, it's the 13th generation core processors, and for the Red Team, it's the Ryzen 7000 series, or the first AM5 CPUs. The coolers I'll be discussing today can be used with either AMD or Intel, and I'll cover three different pricing categories, budget, mid-tier, and high performance. Pricing will increase with each level, obviously. I do want to talk real quick about thermal design power, or TDP. TDP is supposed to be the amount of heat a processor will put out during load. However, all manufacturers come out with their own way of calculating this, so the numbers are really just made up at this point. It's kind of like whose line is it anyway, where the rules are made up and the points don't matter. You can use it as a guide to help you make a choice, but don't rely on it. That's what I'm here for. I'll help you decide which cooler to use for what CPU. First, let's talk about air coolers. They have great price to performance, they are easy to install, and they last longer than AIOs or liquid coolers, so it gives you that peace of mind when you purchase something like an air cooler. I'm going to start out with the budget category. This is for your Ryzen 5s, even Ryzen 7s can use these with no overclocking. And then for your Intel SKUs, anything that's not a K series or has a K in the designator, could be used with a budget style cooler. Since I'm in the budget category, let me make a couple recommendations in this grouping and then I'll move on to each one following. The Vetru V5 CPU air cooler is a great entry level product. It's got five heat pipes, 120 millimeter A RGB fan, and it comes in at 3499 USD. This is compatible with LGA 1700 and AM5, which is both your new 13th gen Intel processors and your AM5 AMD processors. It's got a four pin PWM connector, and then it has a ARGB connector, which is the five volt with three pins, but it looks like it has four. That's, that's a connector for this fan. Uh, it has RAM compatibility. I've used this cooler frequently on the channel here. I think I did a full review on it as well, and I'll leave it in the description if you wanna check it out. But this cooler does have a little bit of compatibility issues with some tall RAM sticks. So just keep that in mind. The fan does stick out pretty far. You can see it in the picture here that it does have a little bit of overlap. If the Vetru is not something you want, if you want something a little bit more name brand, the Deep Cool Gamax GT ARGB cooler is fantastic. It comes in at the same price, the $34.99. It's uh, four heat pipes, I think, for this one. Yep, it's four heat pipes. It does have an ARGB fan on it. It's pretty much the same cooler as the Vetru. It just has one less heat pipe, uh, same price and everything. A little bit different mounting solution than the Vetru one does. Not much, though. I mean, it still uses these spring clips and everything and it does have the uh, the pressure plate basically, but it has this cooler adapter in case you don't have an ARGB header on your motherboard. The Deep Cool Gamax is a great second choice. $35 is an excellent price for the budget category. I really wouldn't go over that amount. If you do, you're getting into the mid-tier category. So let's talk about that. Mid-tier CPU coolers can handle something like a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, once again, without overclocking but it gives you that little bit of buffer room. And then for the Intel side, you can use this for an i5 or an i7, and that does include the K-SKUs as well. I would put this, the mid-tier coolers with a i7 13700K. I think it would handle it just fine. I don't know if I'd recommend overclocking on it. The first one I've got on the list here for the mid-tier category is the Deep Cool AK500 Zero Dark. This one really stood out to me. It's got five heat pipes. These are copper heat pipes, 90 millimeter thickness on the... Uh, the cooler there, but it has a 120 millimeter fan. The thing I really like about this is it's got an offset to it. The CPU cooler is offset from the RAM. So if you have taller RAM, like the Trident Z series that's on this picture is kind of a taller RAM stick. And this cooler still fits because the fan sits back further on the motherboard. So even though it's a bigger heat sink, uh, it still leaves you room for your RAM, which is very nice. This CPU cooler comes in at $54.99 really good mid-tier price and everything. 
if the deep cool design isn't what you want or you want something a little bit different styling, you can go with ID Cooling. Their SE226 XT cooler, it's another thicker cooler. However, uh, this one has six heat pipes on it and it's got uh, rubber grommets on the ends to be able to noise dampen. This one shows you a good display of the offset that this thing has. So this one comes in a little bit cheaper at $49.99. So it's even cheaper than the uh, Deep Cool AK500. And uh, you can see the whole kit that it has here. It's really not too hard of an install. And once again, they have LGA 1700 compatibility, which is fantastic. And if you want some RGB bling, the ID Cooling one does have an RGB version for $5 more. So you have that option as well. Moving on to the high-end section, this is where prices start to creep up a little bit. Your high-end CPU coolers can usually handle really anything from the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 or the Intel i7 or i9. And you can do some moderate overclocking with these CPU coolers. Even though it's an air cooler, it's so big and beefy. It's got such large heat sinks. Two giant fans are usually included. This is my first recommendation here. This is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. It's a very well-known cooler. Uh, it's got two heat sinks. You can see them one down the one side there and then you've got another one with a fan in the middle. I do think this is a 140 millimeter fan on the, uh, the middle section there and then you've got a 120 on the front. So it is a little bit bigger than the 120 fan. Two fans, two tower cooler sections, six heat pipes, absolutely seven heat pipes. It's seven heat pipes. That's incredible. So no wonder this thing is so beefy and can handle 250 watts of power. The only problem is your price. It comes in at $89.90 and this CPU cooler is not brand new. This has been out for quite a while, but wait till I show you the other recommendation I have. The Noctua NHD15. I chose the Chromax version because I like the black aesthetic. They do have this in their original colors for Noctua, which is the, the brown and tan colors. If that's not your thing, they offer it in black as well. It also has two uh, tower cooler designs with the heat pipes down in the middle there. And it's got two gigantic fans. I don't even think they're 120s. Yeah, they're both 140s. So very good cooler, very good uh, reviews and stuff. Now the price, as I said, is even higher than the Be Quiet one. This comes in at $109.95, which is really high for an air cooler. The only two negatives I see with these high-end air coolers is that they're huge and bulky and the price is creeping into the price of liquid cooling. Now that I've recommended a few air coolers, let's look at liquid coolers. Now liquid cooling has a few benefits of its own. They're usually quieter than air coolers. They have stronger performance versus an air cooler and they have fantastic visuals. They're smaller and less bulky than the traditional air cooler. I'm gonna start once again in the budget category. Now the budget tier AIOs can handle even an i9 or a Ryzen 9. Now one thing I wanna hit real quick is I don't recommend 120 millimeter AIOs. I think they have subpar liquid cooling and really you'd be better off just buying an air cooler at that point. Some air coolers in the mid to high tier category can even provide better cooling than 120 millimeter AIO. The ones I recommend, the minimum that I recommend are the 240 millimeter coolers, which is two 120 mil fans. And it's the, the wider version of the cooler. The first one I recommend here is the Vetru V240 liquid CPU cooler. It's a 240 millimeter. It has addressable RGB fans on it. Uh, as I said, it's quieter for liquid cooling than it is for air cooling. This is because your fans don't have to work as hard to dissipate the heat like with an air cooler. This one here has addressable RGB lighting. So it's got the five volt addressable RGB plug. Once again, you can see it here. It's the three pins, not the four pins for a 12 volt. It is not that connector. You're looking at $84.99. So you've got a better aesthetic, better cooling performance than the air coolers. And you've got quieter operation because the fans don't have to work as hard to dissipate the heat. It all goes up to the radiator and then the fans blow it off out of the case from there. The second one I recommend in the budget category is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, another 240 millimeter cooler. Now this one, I don't know if you can tell on this, this one has a thicker radiator than what the uh, Vetru one has. It also has a little VRM fan. You can kind of see it on there. This is Arctic's signature style that they have on all of their coolers. They are AM5 and 1700 compatible now. 
There's no RGB or anything like that, so it's not real flashy, but for $95, you get excellent cooling performance. I wouldn't recommend overclocking, as I said, for the Ryzen 9 or the i9s or anything, even the i7s or the Ryzen 7s. I, I don't really recommend overclocking with this size AIO. I guess you could get into it a little bit, but really for overclocking, you want something just a little bit bigger, maybe a 280 millimeter or a 360 mil. Okay, let's get into the mid-tier category of these AIOs. This is really like my favorite category because you get great pricing, but you get even better performance for that price. These AIOs can handle basically anything. You can handle the i9s, the Ryzen 9s. You can even handle some overclocking as well. Actually, quite a bit of overclocking as I've tried these AIOs specifically and they do great for overclocking. The Corsair H115i Elite Capellix liquid cooler is fantastic. Corsair makes great quality products a lot of people purchase them. Their IQ software is incredible and easy to use. That's what controls your RGB lighting, by the way. But uh, they have a copper cold plate on the back here and the cooling performance is incredible. This is a 280 millimeter liquid AIO, which means it's got two 140 millimeter fans on it. So they're a little bit bigger than the 120s. It's a little bit wider. The only thing you have to worry about with this is you need to make sure your case can hold a 280 millimeter AIO. Some of them cannot. Make sure you pay attention to that before purchasing. The price is really good, $169.99 for this. And as I said, excellent cooling performance. It looks great in pretty much everyone's build that wants to use RGB. For what you're paying for, this performance is really incredible. Another option in the mid-tier category is the Lee & Lee Galahad AIO. This is the 360 millimeter version. I have the 240 millimeter version uh, here in the studio. I actually use it in my own personal build right now. The 360 mil version is three 120 mil fans. It's very tall, as you can see. You have to make sure, once again, that your specific case can fit this, but it does handle any kind of overclocking, any um, configuration of CPU, all the way up to the i9s and the Ryzen 9s. This version is the Unifan version, which has these... Uh, Beautiful RGB fans, but they've just got that edge aesthetic to it. You really just have to pick uh, your build based on that. If you want just a little bit of accent lighting, but not an overabundance of it, you can do something like this. This does come in at $175.90, so it's getting up there in the higher tier pr uh, price. But as I said, your performance is really second to none with something like this AIO. Speaking of performance, if you want something that's absolutely top of the line, there is nothing better, then you need to go with one of these coolers that I recommend here. Once again, this will handle absolutely anything. i9s, Ryzen 9s, it can overclock to the moon if you want to. Really good coolers, but they come at a cost. I have here first the ASUS ROG Ryogen 2 360 AIO. I really like this cooler. It's got three fans, 360 mil. It's got this awesome LCD screen on the pump head. It's just a big cover that goes over the pump head. It comes with three Noctua fans, which are nice and quiet, but perform really well. And uh, it actually has a control module that goes with it to be able to run everything. You don't get RGB on the fans themselves, but you do have that LCD screen that will display all your stats and everything. Typically, the MSRP for this thing is $309.99. Uh, I've frequently seen it for under $300. You can get $299, $289 or something like that. I don't think I've seen it for less than that. But it is a pretty expensive cooler. Pushing the $300 price for a liquid cooler is, uh, is very high. That's why I have really only one choice on this, and that's the NZXT Kraken Z73. It's a 360 millimeter AIO, three 120 mil fans, it has the pump head like I was just showing you with the ASUS one. It's got a little screen on it. It's round instead of circular. Um, really clean aesthetic. You can get it to display stats and stuff. You could do pictures or anything, little uh, little GIFs and whatever you want. Uh, it does come in black and white options. $284.99 is your price on this one. Really good performance. If you want top tier, no expenses spared, I'd go with something like this Kraken Z73. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Now, I think it's time for me to talk about the included coolers that come in the box with some of these CPUs. You're probably wondering, well, which ones do come with it? Allow me to show you. First off, we'll look at the Intel coolers. 
These are new for this last generation. Intel 12th gen is where these coolers came out at and they just carried over into the 13th generation CPUs. The only processors that CPU coolers come with on the Intel side is the ones that don't contain a K in the designator. The RM1 comes with all the processors that don't have a K in the designator. So your i3, your i5s, or your i7s, all the way up to 13700, non-K, will come with the RM1 cooler. The RH1 comes with the 13900 and the 13900F, the i9 versions. So those are your two options when it comes to Intel CPU coolers. On the AMD side, they use their Wraith series coolers. They've been doing this. These have been out since uh, first gen Ryzen. So in this instance, the only SKUs that come with a CPU cooler in Ryzen 7000 are the Ryzen 5 7600, the Ryzen 7 7700, and the Ryzen 9 7900. Those are the only three that'll come with it. The 7600, the Ryzen 5 version, comes with the Wraith Stealth. This is the smaller one right here, the low profile one. The other two CPUs, the Ryzen 7 7700 and the Ryzen 9 7900, will be coming with this Wraith Prism cooler. It performs extremely well. I did like a full review of all the AMD box coolers against a uh, air cooler. It was a, a Be Quiet cooler a little while ago. I'll leave it right up here if you want to check it out because I was pretty impressed with the performance of the Wraith Prism. Just a little spoiler on that one. But there's a reason that many CPUs don't come with coolers these days. With prices of budget style air coolers coming in at like $35 to $40, you can pick one of those up and most of the time get better performance than you would have with something like a Wraith Stealth or that RM1 from Intel. The thermal headroom that an aftermarket cooler gives you, plus the nice design aesthetic that adds to your build, is worth the money. Now, I give you plenty of options when it comes to what coolers to use in 2023 for your next build, whether it be air cooling or liquid cooling. If you got value from this video, I want to remind you to like the video and subscribe for more tech-related content. Also, click that bell icon so you'll be notified when we release new content just like this. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.